This is a molecule of dopamine and it gets a really bad rap. From articles and videos claiming that we have too much dopamine to the recent trend of dopamine detoxes, it's often painted as the bad guy in your life. I want to set the record straight and show you why this little guy can be your friend and not your enemy. So let's talk about what the internet gets wrong about dopamine. Okay, so spend long enough on the internet and you'll hear dopamine described something like this. Good things exist and people want them. When we get those good things, this pesky little guy called dopamine is released. Our brains are kind of addicted to dopamine and will do anything to chase bigger and bigger hits of it. And you should periodically purge yourself of it. And one way to do this is through what's called a dopamine detox. A dopamine detox basically involves temporarily purging everything that's pleasurable from your life. That would include music, video games, and for some people it even includes food. This usually lasts about 24 hours, and allegedly at the end of these 24 hours, you should emerge a new person, freed of all that excess dopamine, and once again able to enjoy the simpler things in life, like reading or a walk in the park. Unfortunately, it's a bit wrong. So let's try and see if we can figure out where these misconceptions are and get a better idea of what dopamine actually does. Okay, so if you've heard of dopamine, you've likely heard it described as a kind of pleasure chemical, but it does something a little different to that in reality, and something a bit more dangerous. You see, throughout the course of our lives, we've learned a lot of things. When you're a kid, you learn that even though the fire looks nice, it'll burn you if you get too close. You learn that if you want to pass an exam, you have to study for it. And you learn that if you want to feel rested and awake during the day, you have to get a good night's sleep or load up with stimulants. And this process of learning can be divided kind of into two stages. You have an expectation and then you have an experience. And this is where dopamine fits in. It bridges that gap between expectation and experience. If our experience exceeds our expectation, dopamine gets released. If our experience doesn't live up to our expectation, we actually get a drop in the amount of dopamine that our brain cells would release. But dopamine does a bit more than this. It not only signals the difference between our expectation and our experience, it also helps us learn from that experience and it helps us update the expectation for the next time. If you have an experience that vastly exceeds your expectation, the dopamine signal will teach your brain to update that expectation for next time. Okay, but what does this have to do with dopamine detoxing or the idea that a person can have too much dopamine, for example? Well, with certain vices, you can get ever-increasing rewards. Take video games, for example. Through the act of leveling up or through things like in-game items and paid for cosmetics, it's possible to constantly exceed your expectations, constantly be presented with something new. And you end up in this kind of vicious cycle. Your expectations are constantly exceeded and so they're constantly raised. When the time comes when you want to consciously quit, your brain or your reward system has learned to want the thing that gives you that great experience that seems to constantly exceed your expectations. And this is independent of how much you actually enjoy it. The things you want aren't necessarily the things that you like. And so odds are it's not the dopamine itself that you're addicted to. Rather, it's your system of reward that's kind of dysregulated. Your expectations are completely out of whack. A book is never going to compete with a video game if a video game is your standard for what a good experience is. And this process doesn't happen overnight. And so a 24 hour dopamine detox isn't really going to do anything. It might give you time and space to think about your actions and to meditate on them, but it's not actually going to do anything to your dopamine levels. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just not doing what it's claimed to do. But I think dopamine detoxing is part of a bigger problem. The idea that a single chemical or a single chemical imbalance is responsible for a wide array of behavioural problems. The reality is dopamine, like every other neurotransmitter, is involved in a bunch of different stuff. It affects your movement, for example. It affects executive function. It affects motivation, reward and planning. It even affects your ability to breastfeed. And amongst the plethora of processes that dopamine is involved in, there's one that stands out as being potentially quite beneficial. And that's delayed gratification. Basically the trade-off between getting a small but immediate reward or holding out for a larger, more significant reward. But I came across this paper about the neural basis of delayed gratification. Basically, how delayed gratification is represented in the brain. 
and these experimenters ran quite an interesting experiment on mice. They basically took a mouse and placed it in a waiting chamber. In this chamber, the mouse had a couple of options. It could either leave and immediately get a small reward of water, or it could wait and receive a bigger reward. And the longer it waited, the bigger the reward it got. And throughout this process, the scientists measured the dopamine levels in a part of the brain that's really important in reward and learning. And they realized something quite interesting. They basically realized that delayed gratification can produce effects that look like instant gratification. Waiting for a reward produced kind of a dopamine boost that looked like what we see when an animal receives an immediate reward. And the longer they waited, the more dopamine was released. The scientists could even artificially stimulate the release of dopamine, and this would encourage the mice to actually wait longer. The mice learned to value delayed rewards just as much as instantaneous rewards. And even though I couldn't find any similar research in humans, I'm gonna to choose to believe the same thing applies for us. Just like with any other habit, it kind of relies on starting small and consciously and unconsciously learning that delayed gratification can be a good thing, that instant pleasure is not always the be all and end all. But that's not the point really. You see, as we've shown, dopamine seems to be involved in a whole bunch of different processes, sometimes ones that seem almost contradictory. And the internet sometimes doesn't have the best hold on exactly what these things do. The brain is complicated, neurotransmitters are complicated, and a short video on the internet is never gonna explain the whole story, this one included. The reality is, in human behavior, there are no magic bullets, not dopamine, not anything. It's really dangerous to blame any problem we have on a single cause, right? But unfortunately, a headline that says dopamine is the cause of all of your problems is way more likely to get clicks than one that says Dopamine may play a role in some neural networks implicated in motivation, but there are also cognitive and psychological factors that influence our behaviors. And these are different for each and every one of us. So I just want you to be mindful of how easy it can be for misinformation to spread. Just make sure that you ask questions and you question the answers you're given. And you should probably be all right, I think. I think you'll be good. Also, make sure you like this video and I hope you learned a thing or two about dopamine, okay? Much love, bye-bye.